Hey guys, hope you all are good. Welcome to another interesting video on our Be Aware channel. So let's begin. Hello guys, hope you all are good. Welcome to another interesting video on process flow understanding. So in today's video, we will be understanding activities related to decide and batch in basics of process flow we have already covered assign labels delay custom code and token creation activities in our videos already uploaded on our channel so if you haven't watched those videos please go to our channel and watch those videos for better understanding so let's begin understanding decide and batch in basics of process flow so we'll begin with the decide so the decide uh, name itself implies that this activity is going to help us in deciding which process flow the token should go. So we are having two options when we use decide. We are having two connectors, connector one and connector two, so that we can transfer the tokens to either of the activity sets, first rank or second rank. So we can drag the connectors from the decide and create two process flows here if you click on the decide you can check out these ranks visible here these are the ranks of the connectors so we are having multiple properties for the decide here you can check we have conditional decide connector by case connector by time array random and round robin things we can apply for decide apart from this you can look at this you can select the connectors you can check where the connectors are connected to you can change from here you can write the name for the connector also you can change the rank for it the most used default type of decide is conditional decide we use and this decide is based on the conditions we apply so if the condition is true the tokens will be going to the connector ranking one if the condition is false the tokens will be going to connector number two this is how the decide activity plays a role what we will be doing is we'll create a small process flow to understand decide activity better i will add a source with intermediate arrival of two seconds and what we will do is we will transfer this part based on round robin if you check at the create object i'll create a box on q1 and i'll create a cylinder on q2 so i'll just select a cylinder and i'll select where it needs to be created and then i'll drag it to the sink sink is very much required to complete any of the processes so i'll just reset and i'll run and we can check that we are supposed to have cylinders and boxes been generated on q1 and q2 respectively so this is how we use decide activity in a process flow in order to create a flow of token in either of the process flow path so this is all about decide when we look at we need to drag this batch so batching is another activity in a basis of process flow we could look at we have these number of properties in the batching activity if you look at the initial property is for batch quantity now the batching this name itself implies that we are going to batch the tokens from certain quantity and we are going to release this by combining those into certain batch quantity so if you look at this what does this state is that we are going to combine two tokens into one token so the input will be two tokens output will be one token when the token will get released we are having basically the quantifier based on which this batch certainly plays a vital role so we have two major types one is number of tokens and another is based on the parent label so number of tokens means you can say that five tokens need to be combined and we need to have two tokens coming out this way the batching can be formed but if you do not want to play batching with respect to numbers what you can go is you can go to the parent labels now what this certainly plays is we need to apply token dot item dot the label name so this is i'm just putting an example whatever items will have the label if the item is having label you need to write token dot item dot label that name and if the label is on the token delete this item and then it would be token dot label whatever label the token has so from that label it will fetch the value for the batch quantity you can put the same here for release quantity 
whenever you are going to use any another property apart from number of tokens you can see this overflow getting highlighted so now you can not change this overflow because in the number of the token thing it is all fixed if you go for parents by label name this way this is visible and you can change now now what does this overflow states the name itself implies that whenever a batching needs to be done above or below basically overflow is like i have set a batching quantity to three and uh, what if i'm having 10 so you can say which condition it should be done so release excess means if i have 10 i will combine 10 into one and release release partial means i will if the batch quantity is three i'll release two go ahead excess quantity hold excess quantity means that if i have three and i have 10 ahead so i'll release three and i will hold those seven extra quantities there and destroy means i'll really de destroy those seven uh, tokens and i'll only take three and convert it to one and release ahead this is how this quantifier based on parent label works so when you look at the label aggregations you can look at here we can assign the label value uh, which we need to check for aggregations so this is from the label that is which has came to the batch activity and this is to the label means which is going to leave the batch activity so say for example i am having a label on a token as weight so from label you will take the weight label it will have a value in kg that is the number of the 300 then to the label it will be again passed on 300 or it needs to be passed on in terms of summation average minimum maximum that is what so from label to label the label data transfer will be based on aggregation so that also you can add here in batch quantity at this label aggregation area then we have use maximum wait timer and we have use maximum idle timer so use maximum wait timer when you click it the batch will be released the timing you mentioned here so if i mention here five seconds the batch will wait to collect the token say my batch size is five tokens and if i have three tokens and my five seconds are completed the batch will be formed by those three tokens only and the token will be released ahead this is what it says it's a maximum waiting time the batch activity should check to complete the batch here we have maximum idle timer this is when our uh, batch is ready and how much time it should wait in the activity after our batch is ready so if i say five seconds it means that my batch is of five tokens is completed but still i will wait for five and then only i'll release so this is what it is use maximum idle timer the concept of the batch activities are more in detail if you require a video on this and complete understanding in detail do let us know by commenting in the comment section or you can write us from our website beaverchannel.com do watch this video or share it this video with your friends because knowledge increases by sharing take care stay simulating bye bye